the downfall of Doll's Kill. Ha! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? How you going? My name's Els and I'm back with another video. What's good? Now this is a company that I never thought I'd make a video about. Now if you've seen my Who's Behind Unit video, you will know that I did touch on them in that video. And at that time, I remember I was getting a lot of DMs and comments, people saying, make a video about Dolls Kill. And immediately when I would search up Dolls Kill, a lot of negative things would come up. Because I got very into making these business vids, I was feeling very kind of like repetitive and the thought of just making another negative video about a company or like a contra controversy, controversy about a company was just kind of like patting me down a bit and I was just like, you know what? I'm not gonna make a video about Dolls Kill because after my unit video, I just kind of felt a bit, a bit, ugh. I did just feel like the retail sector for me, just after making all those videos about different companies, obviously predominantly Brandy Melville, Pretty Little Thing, Unif, you know, I did feel like the retail sector was a bit of a lost cause. I was repeating the same videos, it felt like, because it seemed that every company was doing the exact same thing. And when I just saw the stuff about a Doll's Kill, it just seemed like the worst of the worst out of all of them. But Doll's Kill stuff just seemed like, up here, and Brandy Melville's issues seemed like here. Which, I know Brandy Melville stuff was like, you know, annoying and very controversial. However, just the Dolls Kill stuff, just the weight of it just seemed like really high. And at the time, everything was just everywhere for me. So yeah, I looked about Dolls Kill and I honestly initially just really would love to know why this company has been canceled more than my driving test. So let's, let's hop into it. However though, my loves, if you are new here and you've never seen me before and you're like me, my face and my chan, also known as my Jackie Chan, then subscribe to my chan to become a Jackie Chan of the chan. So yeah, if you wanna join the chan, it really helps me out. If you guys wanna subscribe, support me and my channel, join the crew and yeah. Also, I always like to say in these business videos, if there are any businesses or companies or controversies that you want me to talk about, leave them in the comments below. I've got a few ideas that are burning that I'm very excited for. But if you have anything that's like imminent that you're like, oh no, make a video and talk about that, leave it in the comments and I will for sure look into it for a video idea. I'm gonna stop chatting absolute waffle and I'm gonna get on with the video. So, my first destination, primarily obviously, is normally YouTube because you want to check out to see if anyone else has made a video about them or anything similar to what you've talked about because you don't want to nab someone's idea unknowingly. When I kind of searched up UNIF, there was a mixture of hauls and videos kind of talking about what I'm going to talk about today. I've linked kind of the main videos in the comments of the people that have made videos about UNIF if you want more information about them. So I couldn't really find anywhere that touched on kind of the whole umbrella term of Dolls Kill because I knew a lot of people didn't like them and I'd seen a lot of specific things in the past but I couldn't really remember them all. And when you search Dolls Kill controversy or Dolls Kill cancelled or Dolls Kill drama, it comes up with like 10 different things but none of them kind of group it all together in one. There was no article that I saw or tweet or whatever that kind of grouped it all into one. I was kind of struggling trying to just piece everything together and put them in a timeline, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through Dolls Kill, who they are and from when they started up to kind of how they are, where they're at today. I first found this Reddit thread that just kind of umbrella termed everything that Dolls Kill's kind of hated for slash known for and it was really helpful. So after endless scrolling on this Reddit thread and the hashtag boycott dolls kill hashtag on Twitter, so the general consensus of the issues with their brand are generally the selling of derogatory and prejudiced clothing. They've seen to rip off a lot of independent artists' artwork or clothing designs, and also the owner's handling of certain social campaigns or social injustices that have happened more predominantly in 2020, but there has seen to be a lot of kind of insensitiveness around other social campaigns too, or just social issues in general. Now I'm just gonna preface a bunch now and let you guys know that in this video, I'm gonna focus mainly on the marketing and kind of clothing design aspect of this video. I might get a few comments of people calling me contradictory because a few of the clothing pieces do kind of comment on social issues and kind of like a politics angle. However, the main thing that I'm not gonna to touch on in this video is Dolls Kill's handling of the Black Lives Matter movement. I saw a ton of that on Twitter when I was looking at the boycott Dolls Kill hashtag. That is a mouthful, that's really, try and say that 10 times fast, that's that hashtag, that is, 
I'm all for. So if you're here to listen to me talk about Black Lives Matter and Dolls Cult's handling of that situation, you're in the wrong place, my love. There's probably a bunch of other places that have talked about that. I'm gonna focus mainly on their business timeline, who they are, and issues that have arisen in terms of their marketing and designs. So, bueno, let's get on with this. So I'm gonna start off with who Dolls Cult is. I've got a good old Wikipedia definition here, just kind of talking about who their company is and kind of what their company is. The definition reads, Dolls Kill is an e-commerce apparel website that uses social media marketing to promote its brand and clothing. This is similar to companies such as Hot Topic, Nasty Gal, Well Neo, Mod Cloth. Dolls Kill operates various accounts on social media platforms showcasing its products and collections. Now this is one thing that I actually did find very interesting about Dolls Kill I didn't know. I thought their company was just like their clothing brand and that was them you know take top shop for example yeah i just thought they were their own brand and they just sold dolls kill but if you go on the website they stock like a million brands like a million different companies so e-commerce very good descriptive word for that because that's what they are you know it's exactly the same as like amazon but just for clothes similar but not really you get the point so now you kind of know who they are i'm just gonna give you guys a timeline of their company because i think this is like more interesting than me just kind of pinning each controversy which i will get to so dolls kill was founded slash launched in 2011 by a girl called shoddy lynn and her husband bor bo bori what am I saying? Bobby Farry. I read it wrong. Now there's a bunch of history about kind of like the logistics of why they started. I'm pretty sure the wife was a DJ and they started Dolls Kill Out by just selling foxtail key rings and then it kind of like snowballed into what it is today and them selling more clothes and stuff. So as I said, Dolls Kill was launched in 2011, which is way later than I expected. You know, when you look at places like Nasty Gal or Hot Topic that have been around for bloody ages. I was just expecting them to kind of be around for longer. So yeah, they've only been around for about seven to eight years, which is way less than I expected. Um, I think that's crazy considering like how big they actually are despite the controversies that have happened. You know, how big companies can get in like less than 10 years, I think is mad. So three years after their launch in 2014, they received a $5 million round funding investment from a venture capital company called Maveron. So this particular venture capitalist company called Maveron was based in San Francisco and they've also funded bigger companies such like eBay. There was other companies as well that was listed but I'd never heard of them so I think just to kind of give you guys a relative example, you've all probably heard of eBay. So this five million dollars of funding is what's called round funding. So if you don't know what round funding is, it's basically a way that like start businesses collect investments which can simply just be from like investors but it's also from venture capitalists. And in this case, Dolls Kill got their round funding investment of $5 million from Maveron, which was a venture capitalist company. So another interesting thing actually, after the funding round was completed, the former CEO of Hot Topic, if you don't know what Hot Topic is, it's nowhere in England to be seen. I don't think anyone's heard of it. I've just heard about it through like other American people online, but it's another clothing company and it was set up in 1998. So the former CEO of Hot Topic, Betsy McLolan, why does everyone have really difficult names to pronounce in this video? It's really annoying me. <laughs> At that time, she then joined the board of directors for Dolls Kill. So after the first three years of them launching in 2014, Dolls Kill became the fastest growing retailer in San Francisco. And that statistic is based off of their sales from that year, which in 2014 was about 7.8 million. So, now we've kind of talked about their timeline, that's a very brief timeline, I could have spent a whole video doing a who's behind Dolls Kill, but all the information is readily available on Wikipedia, it's not difficult to find. So, I'm now going to go on and talk about their controversies, which is why Dolls Kill is such a touchy topic in 2021. So, the first controversy we're calling Bay Bad Girl. So 2016 was when their first controversy rolled around and this particular one is including the, the main topic of this video which is their stealing or plagiarism of designs. So this happened when this girl called Bay, Bay? B-A-I? You see what I mean? These names are just impossible. <laughs> called out them for selling one of her designs which was this. Um, the credit card design was hers, they printed it onto a sweatshirt. Um, called it their own. So along with her calling them out for nicking her design, she also called them out 
for selling a top through a company called Sugar Pills Clothing with a t-shirt on it that says dead girls can't say no. Yeah, we all know what that's promoting and I think she was obviously just doing it to reinforce the fact like, hey, they've stolen my design, but they're also doing other shady stuff that needs to be talked about. So after her rampage of calling out Dolls Kill and Sugar Pills Clothing, on Twitter, along with her fans, you know, following on with the bandwagon, helping her out. She ended up getting blocked by Dolls Kill and Sugar Pills Clothing on Twitter. And from what I can see now, if you go on the Dolls Kill website, I know this is in 2016, but Dolls Kill doesn't stock Sugar Pills Clothing anymore, which is a good thing. There's a silver lining to the soul, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, you get it, I guess. However, after reading this, I was very, very curious to see if she had been approached with a lawsuit by them or if she had approached them with a lawsuit. And upon no surprise, she was approached with a lawsuit. Wow. She tweeted this. I'm going to read it off my computer because it's really long and it's kind of jaw-dropping. Oh, her name's Bay Escobar, so... There you go, that's a last name. The tweet read, Dolls Kill hired a private investigator and got hold of my personal phone number and kept calling me from a private number yesterday when I was in the dentist getting my braces tightened. They are based in LA and I'm in Australia. Shoddy Lynn, Dolls Kill's owner, a multi-millionaire husband called Nikki yesterday and told her that his attorney said that they can go after me for harassment and defamation. They were selling stolen designs from me, which brought to light the true information about their company. And now hundreds of people have come forward with their own experiences. If we aren't allowed to speak, isn't that censorship? They hired a private investigator and got hold of private details about me. I don't know what other private and personal information of mine they have. Don't know if I'm being stalked and honestly, I don't feel safe anymore. So that was very interesting and very heavy. When you're obviously in the wrong as a company and you've been called out by an artist such as this girl where you've stolen her designs, what nerve do you have to like go after a lawsuit? It's crazy. Just trying to get money from people, I guess, but I'll shut people up, I don't know. So also according to this article, which is very interesting and shady and weird and just, I'm not naming any names, but it just seems a bit convenient. Shortly after this whole situation, her Twitter account actually got hacked and the tweets where she was calling out Dolls Kill got deleted. Now I'm not saying Dolls Kill hacked her account, but seems a bit weird. <laughs> like obviously she may have just deleted the tweets herself because she was in hot water with Dolls Kill. I probably would have if I was her, but seems a bit weird. Okay, next brand topic we're going to talk about is called Bone Idol. Now, this isn't a situation where Dolls Kill have personally gone and stolen someone's design. This is a situation where a brand being sold within Dolls Kill has stolen other people's designs. Pointed out in the article that I found this information from, this isn't inherently Dolls Kill's fault. Obviously, they haven't personally gone out and found some random designer and took their designs. However, what they have done is allowed a platform for another company to sell someone else's designs. And I think as a e-commerce business, as this massive company that's running all these smaller companies, well, holding all these smaller companies, it is part of your responsibility to check that there's no plagiarism going on. It ultimately falls back on you. Now, here are some comparisons I'm gonna put on the screen. You know, you can kind of just see the uh, copying going on. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a nice world we live in. And I'm honestly shocked because it feels like every company that I start to do research off of, they've all stolen designs in some way. And I just think it's crazy. Like, I know it's impossible for there to be a company that does every single little thing individually because there's always going to be a little thing that's similar. But it's when it's so blatant and they've literally taken it and just printed it on something. It's crazy to me. Basically what's going on here is a massive corporation is just profiting off independent designers' hard work. It probably takes them hours to come up with these designs and produce them and it's literally just a copy and paste job for Dolls Kill and it makes them like hundreds of thousands of dollars in a second. But remember my mentioning of Sugar Pills clothing earlier in the video? Instead of resolving this issue between the girl whose designs that they stole, they just cut Sugar Pills clothing off, which rightfully so. But I just think it's such an easy job then to go and smooth that over with them, give them some compensation and apologise because... Eh? But remember like Sugar Pills clothing for example, they just cut them off. When this whole thing got brought to light about their like derogatory designs, they just got cut off from the company without kind of apologizing or anything. And it's so easy just to make a tweet or something and apologize about that it's probably tumble post. Make a tumble post and apologize. I don't get it. <laughs> 
Okay, my guys, last one I'm gonna talk about is the one that I had seen before, which is the Native American headdress controversy. This one was back in 2014, and I don't know if I saw this in 2014 or what, but the minute I saw the photo, I recognized it. But yeah, this one's interesting because the brands selling through Dolls Kill aren't the only ones privy to a little bit of, little bit of a uh, controversy or 10 soul controversies for that matter. So when this so-called Halloween piece was put on the website back in 2014, a gal called Anna decided to email Dolls Kill directly and basically just be like, hey mate, not cool. Why are you, uh, why are you doing this, you know? Why are you doing it? Now the email she received back from them was pretty shocking. Um, I don't know a word that can describe it apart from this meme. This meme just describes my reaction to this email response. This was like 2014. This was not even that long ago. Well, it's less than 10 years ago, and this was the way that they were dealing with customers and people that had issues with them. So the response from Dolls Kill reads, Hey doll, the last thing Dolls Kill wants to do is be slash represent racist. Racist. Not racism, racist. We love and value individuality and originality. Our company was created to represent dolls of all flavors, colors, ideals, etc. We're here for the misfits, miss legit, and everything in between. I'm sorry if that costume offended you, but to call us racist is pretty ridiculous. We are brassy, sassy, stick it up your okay kind of company. Not for the easily offended norm culture, so take a chill pill. Get your panties out of a bunch because it ain't that serious cutie XOXO Anna. What? Oh, so a girl called Anna didn't send them an email. The, the worker was called Anna. Sorry. The only thing I have to say about the email, right, is how six to seven years ago, that headdress and about five years ago back to that t-shirt, which I know that t-shirt wasn't inherently like dolls killed wearing that on a t-shirt and posting it, but they still like approved it to be posted. How even back then, they label that as edgy. And this is the thing I have a little bit of an issue with. I just mean like the actual content of what they're making and producing and selling. We can all agree that back then, there was probably some Tumblr people or like whatever you want to call it. There was a market for that and it was just classed as edgy and people wore it and they were called misfits or whatever. As she said in that email, she said it's not for the easily offended norm culture. And I don't think that it's about that at all. I just think it's drawing a line in the sand between like edgy humor and just like being a bit of a prick of a company and that line is rather bold in my opinion rather bold you're never ever going to please every single person in the world but i just think there's like a basic level of respect especially when it comes to the responsibility of companies to be respectful i don't know if that ever makes sense i don't even know if i'm making sense right now but i feel like this all loops back to my unit video and it feels like the same exact issue the same exact issue where i had a number of comments where people were saying like well there's some groups of people where these clothes adhere to or that back then this was considered edgy you have the complete right to that opinion and I have the complete right to disagree. And it's the same with Unif and it's the same with Dolls Kill. It's the same with any of these other edgy companies, which just seem really weird to me. But Dolls Kill's clothing, despite the fact that their designer talking about, you know, one kind of prejudice and Unif clothing were talking about another type of prejudice, it's the same exact energy. And can we all have like the same energy around being as outraged for this t-shirt than we are for this t-shirt when they're all holding hands literally right in front of our faces. I don't know if that makes sense and you can might disagree with me and that's completely fine. And I do like just lay the facts out on these videos but just to kind of give an opinion on that email to do with like the headdress situation and then you've got like that t-shirt they were selling and then I just feel like it all links with that unit stuff I was talking about a few months ago. Yeah, it's just similar to me. I think it was an important thing to point out that can we please just all have the same energy. I do think that our society has become way too sensitive to a lot of things like a simple joke people make and just I see something on TikTok every now and then and I'm like wow can people just like chill like it just seems like it's being taken way out of proportion it's just an interesting conversation that's all that's all I just think there's a basic line of respect people can draw when it comes to stuff like this and yeah share my loves that is it for today's video I really do hope you've enjoyed as I said at the start I just want to say if there are any companies that you guys want me to make videos about any controversies you want me to talk about I have a few written down but for anything imminent that you're like hey this is going on I want you to make a video about it let me know in the comments and I'll for sure think about it for a video idea you're a legend thanks so much for watching to this point if you have watched the whole video and yeah catch you in my next one sayonara bye